Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to the next part of our... DIY series. What? Don't, what? You, don't you have it memorized, my no, intro? No, I, I guess I kind of block it out. <sighs> welcome back to the next part of our mobile home renovation, where we're <laughs> taking our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home and renovating it. Currently, we're in our boys' bedroom. We are so close to the finish line, we can taste it. And today, we get to... Finish up with floor molding and window molding. Pretty exciting. Yes. Because that's after the last this, step. Yeah. After this, we're done. Yes. Like done, done. So let's go. Let's go. This one's bowed. <laughs> Real wood. Uh, MDF stuff. So we're gonna have a miter. So I need to miter these quarter rounds. And I need to think of one, I want the long edge on the right, one, I want the long edge on the left. So it's behind the bed? So yes, so one's behind the bed and one's not. So I need to go ahead and miter. Well, if one's on the left, or yeah. one, on the left, one on the right. I'm gonna go ahead and miter these real quick. It didn't go in all the way. <laughs> I kind of chickened out on it. I didn't hold it super tight enough. Overall, that wasn't too bad. Just to put some wood glue on the quarter round and the baseboard molding and then tack them together with inch long brads using a cordless nailer. Not too bad. That's my favorite way of assembling the molding. That's how we did it in the kitchen and dining room when we did that renovation. It just makes it a whole lot easier to just assemble it here and then throw it together on the wall in the room. Angela has got her paint stuff and her paint apron, whatever. This is a good shirt. I don't want to mess it up. Okay. We don't want to mess up no good shirts. So all the assembly is done. Now it is time to paint. Paint. Well, that's how you paint. I only have six more to go. All right, I want to first start on the window casement and I'm following a design that I saw on another YouTube video and then Angela also sent me a picture of off of Pinterest for a general design we want to frame or case out these windows with. As far as materials, I have a variety of one by six primed pine wood for the sill and then some one by threes and one by fours. Basically window molding that was available to us at our local hardware store. I did go ahead and measure the depth of the windows and ripped a lot of the one by fours to the correct depth so that I can trim out the inside of our openings. I also then went and ripped the window seal down to where it is one and a half inches deeper than the inside lip or inside depth of the window. And that should give us a nice reveal and lip around the outside of our casement molding. My first step on all of this, now that I have everything ripped to their actual widths and my rough measurements in mind, is to go ahead and start working on the window sill first. I'm gonna measure the actual width of the piece that I want to cut, including the bevel angles for this bay window pop-out we have here in this location, and then go ahead and cut my piece Hold it in place, 
make lines to mark where the actual window openings are and make my measurements and marks and everything to notch it so that one piece of window seal will slide in and work for both of these windows all together. This is probably the most complicated board or a piece of trim I need to cut for this whole job. So I'm gonna focus, but I don't think it'll be too difficult as long as I measure once, twice, three times, and then cut once or however many times as long as I don't cut too much. That was by far the hardest piece to cut for this entire job as far as casing out these windows. It's not 100% perfect, but it is very, very nice considering the complexities involved. The fact that I had to cut two window cutouts out of one board, in addition to beveling for the bay window at different angles, and then uh, almost messing up, fixing it, almost messing up again, but having divine intervention not put nails in my nail gun. Overall, ended up with a very nice product, and I'm very, very happy with that. That's great. This can be polished up, finished out with caulking, and look real nice. Next thing to do is go ahead and start trimming out the inside of the windows. I'm going to start on the tops first, then I'll do the left and right sides, or inside, outside, and then we can go on to the window casing. But, let's not get too far ahead. Let's actually do what I just said first. The top of the window trim, I won't say casing, I believe that's what's on the face, on the drywall. I think this is just the trim or framing. Either way, those pieces are done. What you saw me do is I actually had to do two layers of this trim to cover up where the window uh, spray foam, gasket, whatever, get back to the window face. If you also look very, very closely, you'll see that the actual top board trim is not square or parallel with the window itself. I had to choose whether I wanted to parallel to the windows or keep my corner square with the framing of the home. I chose to keep everything square with the framing and just let the windows be a little bit wabi-sabi because that's the easiest thing and that's what's going to cause the least number of issues in the future when we go to install blinds or do any kind of extra trim and just basically finish this project. This trim that we bought is pre-primed and it's MDF. I wanted to get solid wood or pine finger joint trim, but I could not find any in the store that was not just outrageously priced. So we're going with MDF in this case. It's not ideal, but it's the best option we had right now. Like I said, the trim comes pre-primed and it also comes with a bull nose or rounded edge on both sides. This was ripped down on the table saw, so I have a sharp square edge. That's also why this side is not primed. I'm choosing to put the rounded edge towards the window so that we can caulk around it and you won't see any gaps and so that whenever you get closest to the outside of the window, the part you'll really see the most. We have a nice square face to butt up against with our casement and it should give a better look in the end. All right, the tops are all done. So now I just repeat the process for the left and right of each window opening, hoping that one thickness is good enough because I'm running low on material. I only bought just enough for the project with a little bit extra.
Well, the insides of the windows are done. And as you can see, Angela is here. She's just been kind of hanging out behind the camera because I'm over here in sawdust land and she's like, if you need my help, I just can't do her. anything. Yeah. But I like having you in here. We can talk about stuff. Yeah. Like the meaning of life. What are the kids doing? Mm -hmm. It's quiet. Yep. You know, that kind of stuff. So I did have to do a miter here on this far right side of the right window. And that was a choice because we ran out of material. So we could either stop what we were doing, drive probably 30 miles round trip, spend another 14 to $15 for one board, rip it, cut it and all that, just to not have a miter. Or I could show you guys how you could miter your molding, get a pretty good finish, be frugal, and otherwise just keep rock and rolling on the project. It's not that big of a deal. It's really not. Because most of the time the blinds will be down mm -hmm. or at least, you know, cover the miter. That's why I put it up high. So it's good. It's fine. What we're going to do next is actually put the piece of molding across the top. We're going to do one solid piece. I've got a little scrap of the casement that's going to be on the verticals uh, cut. I'm going to put it up there and mark it and see whether or not it goes all the way to the uh, corners or bevels of the wall. I hope it doesn't. I'd rather not have to bevel stuff again. But either way, the next thing to do is the top of the window casement. The window casement, casing, molding, trim, whatever you want to call it. That is done. What do you think of it? I think it's beautiful. It looks great. I'm glad to hear it. It exceeded my expectations. Yes. Overall, it wasn't too bad to do really. I think the hardest piece of all was the window seal because it had multiple cuts and only had one chance to get it right. Thankfully, I was able to sneak in there and good enough. The caulk will be able to finish it off everything fine and it'll look great. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really nice as it is, so it's not like we're trying to hide our mistakes <laughs> with the caulk, but it'll just trim it out really nice. So we want to keep continuing on this rock and roll party of trim. Yes. And we're going to do the floor molding next. This room being what it is and this house being what it is, there are no 90 degree angles in the room. They're close, but they're not perfect. So we're going to be measuring all of our cuts with this bevel gauge. In an ideal world, you would have like a digital angle finder and I'll put a link to one below that I would have bought if I was buying one. But in the name of get it done soon, I'll be using a bevel gauge and then a protractor. We'll just find our angles in each of the corners, measure the protractor, divide it in half, and that'll give us our two angles to cut our pieces. Just like we did this ceiling. Yes, just like we did with the crown molding. Ugh, bad memories. So as far as installation, it's pretty straightforward. When you get your bevel cuts made, put it against the floor and the wall. And in our case, using some two inch brad nails, nail it in place. So we're gonna stick you guys in the corner as usual so we can continue to get this stuff knocked out, focus, and we'll see you guys when we have something cool to say or when the job's done.
say that makes the room look super nice. It does. It's like, like... I don't know. You did it in another video. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've been married long enough. We don't have individual minds anymore. No, we just work together. So, again, we use the power of caulk to finish it out. A couple of people commented in our crown molding video a saying that mm -hmm. applies again to the floor molding. It says, caulk and paint make me the carpenter I ain't. There you go. I fill it in. Took it a filler. That was fill it and filler in been, together. Uh, drinking the apple juice there? The no. Filler. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. This room, construction wise, for now, is done. Yes. The pocket door has not been finished, and of course the doorway is not trimmed out. But we're not doing that until the hallway gets done so that we can kind of trim it all at once. Otherwise, that's it. Let's throw the kids in here. That's it. We're done. We're done. Yep. Just shove them in here. Yep. Do they it yourself. Sleep on the floor. Figure it out. We're just kidding. We do plan on uh, moving our children here in a nice parental fashion. <laughs> we've also got a little bit of a DIY project that we're going to do on moving day. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. But all in all, I don't... I'm just rambling. This room has been checked off. Feels good. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment below. We love to read them. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See ya. Bye. My, my cue if I'm, oh. I'm cut. Like I ever, whatever, director and staff of one here. Either way, she is ready. She's going to start splapping, splapping. So, and, and you throw I'm me gonna off. I'm going to start painting. That's not going to work. <laughs> Paint and caulk make me the... Carpenter, ah, uh, forget it. I probably, yeah, what? Caulk and paint. Okay, that's it. So someone in a previous video in our, okay, I'm saying. So someone, or actually, holy moly. There you go, focus on the face. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Well, guys, sure. peace out. Well, guys. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> what are you giggling over? Because I say, well, guys, like every day. Well, what else are you going to say? That's your outro. That's you. This is Angela's outro. Well, guys, thanks for watching. No, Leave no, us you got to say it okay. normal. That's a little bit sheepish. You're not sheepish. <laughs> oh. Well, guys, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> That hurt. I'm making my eye twitch. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment below. We love to read them.